happening. Appreciate you tuning in for this video. Today we're doing a player spotlight on Robert Allen Deal, better known as Mick Mars. Now there's a little controversy out there surrounding his birthday. Some information says he was born May 4th, 1951. Other information says he was born on April 4th, 1955. Personally, I think it's got to be 1951 because he is quite a bit older than the other members of Motley Crue. But as a gag or just part of his strange sense of humor, he's never confirmed or denied either one of them. So it just kind of remains a little mystery that's pretty cool. Um, I was never a humongous Motley Crue fan, but I can't deny the impact the first two albums had on me. Too Fast for Love and Shout at the Devil. Now when Shout at the Devil came out, nobody's parents, at least my age, back in the early 80s, would let them own those records. Like we had to sneak them into the house. I can remember putting mine inside a kiss cover and bringing it in the house, just so I could get it past my mother. But anyway, that's how it was back then. Things are a little bit different now. I was always, uh, always more into heavier stuff. You know, glam rock was never my thing, but Molly Crew was great. Those first two albums were really, really huge, uh, especially in the heavy metal world. Now, Too Fast for Love, personally, is my favorite Motley Crue album. I think that awesome, that record is awesome. There's some killer riffs on that album. Shout at the Devil is a close second, but for me, it's always going to be Too Fast for Love, that first record. It was a super low-budget record, but it just captured the raw sound of the band and the energy they had at the time. They were young and hungry. Uh, as they got more money and more involved with the production of their music, it just, to me, sounds too polished, and I was never a huge fan of Vince Neil's vocals. You can crucify me for that if you want, but that's just me. Everybody has their own taste. But you will catch me every once in a while listening to those first two albums. It's been known to happen. I just wanted to talk about some of the riffs uh, that Mick Mars plays. Mick Mars is a really, really bluesy guitar player. Um, he blends blues and rock together really, really well. He also suffers from a really bad disease. Uh, some of you may have known. If you watched the, the Dirt movie, uh, the Rockumentary, whatever you want to call it, um, it talks about Mick being diagnosed with ankylosing spondylitis at the age of 17, which is a really shitty, crippling disease that affects the uh, mobility of the spinal cord, and it causes the joints and the inside of your spine to fuse together, and it pulls you inward like this. Uh, it severely restricts his mobility. And can you imagine being a 17-year-old on the verge of one of the biggest rock and roll careers ever to be diagnosed with something like that? He's got a lot of respect for me for, for living the life he did and uh, going through what he had to. He had to be in constant pain all the time. He's had quite a few surgeries, hip replacements and things like that. But, you know, a lot of people just think that, you know, the way he kind of hunches over and stands kind of stiff, uh, especially in his, his older years, was part of his stage presence, but nope, he's just in pain. But that's cool. I, I really respect him for being able to play through that pain. I want to talk about some, some riffs. Uh, probably my favorite riff off their first record. Well, this, I can't have a favorite. There's so many. Uh, 10 Seconds to Love is definitely one of my favorite riffs off that first record. And by the way, I just want to let you know, Motley Crue does double flat tuning for almost everything. Uh, double flat or D standard tuning, which is two whole steps down from a standard tuned guitar, which is normally in E. Uh, they tune to D, so it's got a lower, heavier sound, like this. Just gives it a, a bigger, broader sound, and I think that's a big part of the, the crew sound. I really do. But anyway, let's talk about some riffs. Ten Seconds to Love goes like this. song. That was one of the first ones I heard off that record, if my memory serves me correct. Uh, I was a little kid. Um, my grandparents were snowbirds, so they spent half the year in Florida, 
and half the year here in Pennsylvania. And they had a really nice cottage up on a, uh, a lake that's about an hour from where I live now. It's called Canadota Lake. And I spent most of my summers up there as a young kid. It was a great place, man. We ran wild and just did whatever we wanted. But it was a different time back then. There weren't so many dangers out there in the world. No creepy people. Well, I mean, I'm sure there was, but just not around there. It was a really cool place to grow up. And I can remember hearing that song in the arcade back when we used to hang out at arcades on the jukebox. And I can remember going to the uh, Mill Creek Mall in Erie, Pennsylvania with my grandparents and asking my grandmother for the $9 to buy that record. And when she saw the cover, she just gave me that look that grandmas give you. You know, like, what are you doing listening to that? Those long-haired, greasy, dirty hippies. But anyway, she was cool about it. She still let me buy it. Thanks, Grandma. Miss you. Um, next riff I want to talk about is Livewire. Livewire is one that I'm sure everybody's heard. Um, and his downpicking in the beginning of this, he actually plays it downpicked. I can't quite get it that fast. He, he plays it like... I, I just can't do it. So I double pick it. Does some cool harmonics there at the end. It's one of those cool songs. I always like the riff. That intro riff grabs you right by the nards and uh, just makes you pay attention to the whole entire song. But it's, it's a cool song. That one's also off of Too Fast for Love. Uh, 10 Seconds to Love, I have to digress. 10 Seconds to Love is off of Shout at the Devil. Yep, I made a mistake. Now, if you've watched any of my other videos, you know that happens sometimes. Um, let's move right along. Uh, Looks That Kill. Now, this was the first music video I ever saw by Motley Crue, and it's really bizarre. Like, they're chasing this chick around downtown Chinatown in the apocalypse or something. It's pretty strange, but uh, the riff goes like this. Just something like that. He's uh, Mick Mars plays a Floyd-equipped guitar. 90% uh, of the time, so he can do some pretty cool stuff like that. I, it's a little harder for me with a fixed bridge guitar. But he did play a Les Paul earlier in his career. Uh, I don't know if it was a standard or a custom, I can't remember. But it was black, and it had some kind of a weird yellow diamond paint job on the front. And in the movie, uh, in the in the biopic, Dirt, The Dirt, it showed him playing an Epiphone, and it just made me cringe. Mick Mars, he probably played one. The one he played in Motley Crue was a Gibson. So, back to the riffs anyway. This next one I want to talk about was not actually written by Motley Crue. Uh, now, this one's also off Shout at the Devil. Um, it's actually a Beatles song about Charlie Manson and uh, the murders that he and his gang of wackos committed. Uh, Helter Skelter, let me see if I remember it. It's been a long time since I've played a lot of these riffs, so forgive me if I screw them up. And I know I'm not playing all of them 100% right, so all you critics out there, save your breath. I know, I'm no Mick Mars, but it's all right. Uh, it goes like this. that in a band I was in, but we played it in E standard, um, and it would have sounded like this. Just 
just a little different. But uh, of course, our singer didn't sing like Vince Neil either, so the whole song sounded different. But the Beatles version is actually super heavy. If you've never heard it, go check it out. Um, the next song I want to talk about is also off of Shout at the Devil. It's Too Young to Fall in Love. <laughs> I make all kind of mistakes in these videos. It's got a cool beginning. Um, whole song is pretty cool. I like a lot of the way their music feels. You know, most of it's 4-4, like most other rock and roll and metal. Uh, but I do dig that tune. That's a good one. Um, the next one I want to talk about is Take Me to the Top. Now, I'm not sure what the hell this song's about. Are you talking about the circus or sexual positions? Well, who knows? Or maybe he means the top of the charts. But it goes like this. <laughs> He gets some pretty cool effects on that. He uh, uses natural harmonics by moving his pick. Or, I'm sorry, false harmonics. Pretty cool. He, uh, Mick uses a lot of harmonics. Mm -hmm. He uses a lot of harmonics in his songs. Helps fill it out. Uh, he's the only guitar player in the band, of course. Um, they, had, they did have one other guitar player for a while. Um, in the early days, I guess he was a, more of a rhythm guy, but Mick kind of picked on him, and the rest of them kicked him out because they knew Mick Mars was the better fit, and I think they made the right choice. Sorry, rhythm guy. You just weren't cut out for Motley Crue. Um, next song I want to talk about is uh, Too Fast for Love. Uh, now, this one is all obviously not off Shout at the Devil. It's off Too Fast for Love. Uh, Stone Sour did a cool cover of this song, if you've never heard it. Check that out, too. It's pretty cool. Um, the Too Fast for Love goes like this. <laughs> Course goes like this. cool run uh, at the end of the song. It's... So 
something like that. I always always thought that was pretty cool sounding. Uh, that whole record's pretty cool. It's just raw, and it just sounds awesome. To me, that's their best record. I mean, you may disagree, but like I said in one of my other videos, we all like different stuff, and that's what makes the world go round, right? Um, the next song I want to talk about is, it's off of uh, Too Fast for Love also, uh, Public Enemy number one. I'm having trouble with my hand going numb lately, not sure what's going on. It's been causing me some issues at work, uh, and obviously playing the guitar. So just forgive me for a second while I shake some blood into my hand. Public Enemy number one goes like this. <laughs> sure what that's about now. Nikki Six wrote, wrote almost all the music, especially in the first few albums. I couldn't tell you about their later stuff, um, but uh, he's, I gotta say, he's a pretty good songwriter. Sometimes I think he's a little bit of a tool uh, just by the way he carries himself, but I gotta respect the guy, you know, anybody who's died from two heroin overdoses and come back both times, gotta respect that a little bit, you know what I mean? Now, this last song I'm going to talk about, it's the one that everybody knows, even if you hate Motley Crue, you've heard this song, and it's off a much later album that was produced by Bob Rock, uh, it's off the Dr. Feelgood album. I just got to play it, because everybody knows it, and I, got, I ain't going to lie, it's a fun riff to play, but I'll probably screw it up, it's alright. <clears throat> Let me see, how's it start? Oh yeah. chord in there. Always sounds good, no matter what song you put it in. Um, there is actually one more song I'll talk about, and it's one I never liked much either, but it's also uh, off a later album, Girls, 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 and it is the title track. I think it goes something like this. Uh, yeah. stuff's fun to play regardless of what you think of the band um i just wanted to talk a little bit about mick mars today because like i said i think he's a pretty cool guitar player super bluesy and he mixes it well with rock and i always kind of liked that he was a little bit of a weirdo because aren't we all really deep down inside i think so well anyway guys that's it don't have much else to do uh in this video just wanted to hang out talk a little bit about mick mars uh this is Part of a series I'm going to be doing, as you've seen, I've done a couple other videos. I don't know that there'll be a part two to this one, to be quite honest with you. I don't know a whole lot, Mick, you know, I don't know, know very many more Mick Mars riffs. Uh, but this is a good, good long part one anyway. 
And it's just part of a player spotlight series I'm going to be doing. I've done one on Ace Fraley. I've done one on Jerry Contrell. Both of those, uh, well, Jerry, Jerry has two parts. I haven't done the second part to Ace uh, Fraley yet, but that is coming. If you haven't seen those, go check them out. And uh, if you're still watching this, obviously you can stomach me long enough to get through a video. So why don't you hit that like button and go ahead and subscribe to my channel and you'll get to see all these awesome videos that I'm going to be doing. Don't worry, I'm working on my video production, so they will get better. Anyway, guys, that's it. Have an awesome day, and until next time, see ya!